Hello, and welcome to this UW-Madison custodial back safety presentation. This presentation will focus on back safety for tasks involving snow removal. Living and working in Wisconsin offers many benefits. We all enjoy our natural resources, lakes, forests, our sports teams, entertainment opportunities, cultural diversity, and our four distinct seasons. However, we also have to manage long winters with plenty of cold weather, snow, and ice. Living in Wisconsin, we are accustomed to shoveling snow around our homes, our driveways, and sidewalks. But for some of us, it is also part of our job. On campus, many custodians not only have the responsibility to keep the inside of buildings operational, but also tend to areas outside of the buildings as well. In most cases, custodians on campus are responsible for snow removal from the sidewalks to the building entrances. This usually includes steps, walkways, and common use areas. Therefore, it is important that custodians are aware of the hazards of snow removal and understand how to remove snow safely. Heavy snow, ice, cold weather, and labor-intensive activities are all potential hazards for custodians responsible for snow removal. It is therefore important to consider risks and hazards before you start any physical task, such as snow shoveling. When considering snow removal, you must think about environmental issues such as temperature and wind, visibility, surface conditions on walkways and steps, the amount of snow, and whether it is heavy or wet, or light and dry. Your physical condition also needs to be considered. Snow removal can be a labor-intensive aerobic activity. Although it may be considered good exercise, people continually overexert themselves during snow removal. Individuals with heart problems and existing back problems must take extra consideration because of the amount of work and the exertion required. Proper consideration and an understanding of the hazards can help in determining the best tools in personal preparation. Dressing warmly is important for any work conducted outdoors during the winter. Dress in layers, but wear clothing that is easy to move in. Proper boots are essential for keeping feet warm and dry. Additional spikes and cleats can be worn over boots in icy and slippery conditions. Choose gloves that will keep your hands warm, dry, and blister free. Consider thicker gloves allowing for a good grip on the shovel's handle. Using the proper tools will also make your job easier and safer. There are several types of shovels, ice picks, and brooms that can move snow and ice. An ergonomic snow shovel can help take some of the effort out of your snow removal chores. A shovel with a curved handle or an adjustable handle length will minimize painful bending. In addition, a small, lightweight plastic blade helps reduce the amount of weight that you are moving. The last step in preparation for snow removal is stretching and warming up your muscles. Cold, tight muscles are more prone to injury than warmed up, flexible muscles. Do your back a favor by warming up for five to 10 minutes before shoveling or any other strenuous activity. Get your blood moving with a brisk walk, marching in place, or another full body activity. Then, stretch with some gentle stretching exercises, including the shoulder shrug, which may help reduce upper back and neck discomfort. The mid-back stretch may help reduce fatigue between the shoulder blades. The hamstring stretch may help reduce lower back discomfort. Finally, the standing back bend may help reduce lower back discomfort. Depending on the amount of snow, you may be able to use a push shovel to push the snow, much like a snow plow would. Always use a push shovel to push the snow to one side, rather than lifting it. It is important to use your body properly when pushing snow. First, use proper hand placement about 12 to 20 inches apart on the shovel. Make sure to bend with your knees, not your back. Keep shoulders and hips in alignment. Use proper foot placement, a wide base of support in small steps to avoid slipping. When pushing snow, angle the shovel head to allow the snow to roll off of one side of the shovel, just like a snow plow. This technique may decrease the buildup of too much snow and weight. 
If snow does build up on the shovel head and there is too much weight to push safely, stop and later revisit the pile with a scoop shovel. Never attempt to scoop with a push shovel. The push shovel is not designed to properly distribute weight for lifting or carrying. When snow is too heavy to push, or you have pushed light snow into a pile at the end of a walkway, you will need to use a scoop shovel. Scoop shovels are designed to balance the weight of the snow properly to allow for easier snow lifting, carrying, and dumping. When gripping the shovel, keep your hands about 12 inches apart to provide greater stability and leverage. Face the task directly. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart to maintain balance. Try to keep the shovel close to your body. Bend at the knees, not the waist or back. Tighten your stomach muscles as you lift the snow. Lift with your legs. Scoop small amounts of snow onto the shovel and walk to where you want to dump it rather than reaching, tossing, or throwing the load. Do not twist your body. Dump the snow in front of you. If you need to move the snow to the side, move with your feet. Do not twist with your back. Avoid removing deep snow all at once. Do it piecemeal. Shovel an inch or two, then take another inch off. Rest and repeat as necessary. When working on uneven surfaces like ramps or steps, take extra precaution. Be especially considerate of proper foot placement to avoid slips and falls. If the ground is icy or slick, spread sand or salt over the area to help create foot traction. Be aware that some areas may be uneven and could cause you to slip, trip, and fall. Whether using a push or a scoop shovel, it is best to push the shovel across the steps rather than lifting the snow on an uneven surface. You can either remove snow from steps from the top to bottom or the bottom to top. Both have pros and cons. If you choose to shovel from the top down to collect the snow at the bottom, make sure you are careful moving your feet across the lower steps that have not yet been shoveled. Always wear boots with good traction. Consider wearing strap-on cleats over your boots. If a large pile of snow collects at the bottom of the steps, use a scoop shovel for proper removal while keeping in mind proper body techniques as mentioned earlier. When snow is compacted or ice is found, you may need to break it up with an ice chopper. Use a wide base of support, feet should be shoulder width apart, place both hands approximately 12 to 20 inches apart on the ice chopper. Begin an up and down chopping motion in front of your body. Take special caution to avoid chopping near your boots. Alternate between shoveling and chopping ice to change your body position to avoid fatigue with one particular task. After you have finished removing the majority of visible snow and ice, you should apply salt or sand to add traction, working to ensure that any remaining slippery surfaces are covered. Salt and sand are typically kept in five gallon containers in a custodial storeroom or somewhere near the building entrance. This container is usually too full and too heavy to move around, so it is important to have a smaller bucket or container to take with you outside. You may also use a cart to move the five gallon bucket safely. You may also transfer some of the salt into one gallon containers to make it easier to transport. When spreading salt, avoid bending with your back. Ensure a good stance and proper foot placement and spread salt with a consistent sweeping motion. Finally, it is important to understand that even when we are safety conscious and follow safe work practices, accidents may still occur. It is important that if you ever injure your back while performing your job, that you report it as soon as possible to your supervisor. Your supervisor will have the proper paperwork for you to fill out so that the injury is recorded and so that you can go to the doctor if a medical evaluation is necessary. With any injury, if you feel that it warrants a medical evaluation, go to your doctor or emergency room. Always be sure to indicate to your provider that the injury was job related. As we have discussed so far in this presentation, safe snow removal requires proper preparation, tools, and techniques. Let's review some important highlights. 
Always conduct a risk assessment to determine hazards before you start. Understand that snow removal can be a labor-intensive aerobic activity. Always warm up and stretch before you go out. Proper clothing and equipment is vital to safe snow removal. Depending on the amount of snow and ice, use the proper tools and shovels for safety and efficiency. Be especially careful on steps, inclines, and declines. Use proper body mechanics to prevent injury and increase productivity, and always report accidents and injuries to your supervisor and fill out the necessary forms. Much of the information discussed in this presentation is provided in further detail in the Custodial Back Safety Handbook, which is available online. Thank you for your participation.